what kind of fight do you think this is going to be in the ring? I don't know. I'm not. I don't, a mismatch. I don't and, and, I, and I'm going to show him that he he do the same thing over. He got only he only got one game plan. And when that don't work, everything go out the window. Devin Haney put on an absolute boxing clinic versus Regis Progre. Going into the fight, both camps were at war with words in terms of who would get victory. However, as much as I was edging Haney to get victory, I was not expecting him to put on such a complete boxing performance against a very skilled fighter. But on that note, let's take a look at how Haney was able to dominate so easily. As this fight was pay-per-view, I'm only able to use screenshots, but you can go to my Patreon in the link below where I've used fight footage. But on that note, let's get right into this video. So before the fight, I said the keys for victory for Devin Haney were of course to establish the jab, to disrupt Progre's rhythm, utilizing lateral movement to frustrate him while capitalizing on counterpunching opportunities. While I also suspected Progre would be more of the aggressor, with Haney targeting the body of Progre, like he did in the Loma fight with that right uppercut or hook, as Progre does bend to his left coming into range as a southpaw, which is a typical pattern of southpaws who look to slip the jab of the orthodox fighter. Now from round one, it was clear to me anyway, Haney used his physical advantage of that 71 inch reach compared to Progre's 67 inches. And it was evident early this was going to be an issue for Progre trying to close the distance in a southpaw versus orthodox exchange where there is slightly more space between him and his opponent. Now Progre likes to throw heavy sharp jabs in between the space between him and his opponent, which can give a false sense of space which results in them throwing out their own jab only for Progre to counter with his own jab or left hand. However, Devin is another kettle of fish compared to most of his opponents to date, and he wasn't able to fall for this trap. Instead, Devin would just take a step back when Progre threw the jab, or even frame out his lead hand, while he would also continually move out to his left, so Regis couldn't set up his left hand. While Haney would also look to get the outside position on the southpaw whenever he threw that 1-2 or lead straight. Now funnily enough for me, round 1 was the only round I actually gave Progre and that's because he did actually land some good body shots with the left hand even though it was still quite a close round. Unfortunately for Regis, Haney was able to figure out the perfect range and positioning to fight him from and this would be the case for the rest of the fight. Haney then stuck to his perfect game plan of mainly boxing from the outside but also standing his ground, taking a slight step back each time Regis threw. And because Regis even early was struggling to close the distance, he just had to be patient and wait for him to overcommit. Before countering him and then moving off laterally to his left or to his right off the ropes to return to the centre ring. While Haney was also intelligently pivoting out to his left when Regis was trying to close the range. Once again, this tactic from Haney obviously got him away from Progre's left hand and back to the centre of the ring, forcing Regis to try and reset himself again. Even watching, I could tell Progre was getting frustrated early and was willing to take a chance in closing the distance. Obviously this results in round 3, which was probably the moment that defined the fight. With Regis struggling to close the distance, he was putting more weight on that front foot coming into range, throwing the jab while he would use a slight pause just before his next move, while also having his lead shoulder down. And this is where you need to give Haney some credit for his boxing IQ for recognising this in front of him. Of course, Haney capitalised on the opportunity as Progre's feet were set, giving him the perfect opportunity to throw the right hand and get on the outside position, while Progre was also bending slightly to his left and, of course, was able to set him up with that straight right. Now, as I just mentioned, a typical southpaw pattern that most do is bending or slipping to their left to dodge incoming jabs from orthodox fighters. So it was smart on Haney's part to occasionally throw this jab leading up to this to make him bend to his right. And obviously I think this punch also made Regis maybe respect Haney's power. And here, Progre started to utilise the high guard more to help him close the distance, but also to help him not get hit with the right again. But once again, this opened up more opportunities for Haney to target the body with the right hand, making Regis even more indecisive coming into range while it also meant Haney could get off his best weapon, his jab, as it now meant he could target that lead hand as he came into range, while helping to occupy the guard, very similar to what he did in the Jojo Diaz fight. And for the rest of the fight, it was more about taming the beast of Rougarou, 
by using just slight linear footwork before moving out to his left to once again stop Regis from setting up that left hand and of course waiting for the right moment to throw his right hand either as a lead or behind his jab as he knew Regis had no choice but to try close the distance and set up his left hand. And it was around round 6 I believe it was evident that Regis was just trying to land something and wasn't focusing on cutting off the ring and moving to his right to get in that outside position. And I believe it was round 6 or 7 his corner tried to say to him to let Haney come to him, but by that point it was really too late in my opinion, as Haney obviously had the longer reach and was able to control him with the jab from range knowing that Regis had to close the distance if he wanted to land anything of any substance on him. Progre did try to change up his game plan by doubling up his jab to try and get into range, but Haney's movement was just too good as he was able to turn and pivot out of danger all too easily and once again get behind his jab to control the fight. Overall, it was just terrific ring generalship from Haney and this fight will be a brilliant example in years to come of a rangy orthodox outboxer and how to defeat an aggressive southpaw puncher with ease and you have to applaud him for that performance. Would I have liked Haney to maybe try and get the finish? Well, given Regis' history of proven power of that left, it was a risky move and it was probably a safe bet boxing like this for the majority of the fight. And just looking at the final punch stats from CompuBox, it's clear it did tell the story in terms of looking at those stats. And when you consider they kind of threw more or less the same punches, but Haney landed 93 more than him, it just shows you how dominant this was. Not to mention, according to CompuBox, it was the least amount of landed punches by a fighter over 12 rounds. And this no doubt is going to give Regis nightmares when he looks back at this. But yeah, in terms of what's next for Devin Haney, I'm sure most would like the rematch of Loma, but I suspect he will stick to £140 now. And there's still some huge fights that could be made here, like Satia Fimo, Mateus, Romero and Ryan Garcia. But I think we would also like to see that match up with Tank, but I doubt he'll go back to 135 and I think Tank would probably have to move up if they wanted to make that fight. But you never know what will happen. For Regis, well, it's back to the drawing board. I personally expected a lot better of him and thought he would make some improvements going into this closing off the ring, but I'm sure there will be some big fights from 140. Although tonight was a terrible night, I hope to see him back in the future and prove us wrong that he can still fight at this level. But yeah, guys, let me know what your thoughts were on the fight. Do you think that was Devin Haney's best performance to date? And who would you like to see him fight next? This has been Jamie from Boxing Life. Thank you so much for watching, and as always guys, I'll see you in the next one.